T minus one minute. T-minus 30 seconds. We are go for launch. T-minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, Welcome to the NASA Social for the Mars 2020 mission. The countdown is on. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to our Countdown to Mars virtual NASA social. I, again, am Yves Lamoth with the Exploration Ground System, Comp Systems as the project manager. And with me, once again, Maddie. Maddie, how's it going? I'm doing great, Eves. How are you? I am doing as great as can be. All right, so since, as, 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 as I like to say, you're great, I'm great, let's make them great. All right, so what do we have in store for now? So we have a really awesome show coming up. Not only do we have a great guest, we're also gonna take you behind the scenes at Space Launch Complex 41, which is where the Perseverance rover will be launching uh, tomorrow morning. So while you're joining us, uh, make sure to drop your questions in the YouTube channel chat in the virtual social Facebook group or on Twitter using the hashtag countdown for Mars. Awesome. That is fantastic. So as Maddie said, right, um, it's behind the scenes at the launch pad. What really happens in order for us to be able to launch this baby? So let's take a look. The journey of 30 million miles to Mars begins right here at Pad 41 here at the Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. Hi everyone, I'm Daryl with NASA Communications and I'm joined by Isaac Spence, Lead Structures Engineer for United Launch Alliance. And we are standing right here, Isaac, just a few feet from the pad where this Atlas V is going to take Mars Perseverance on this incredibly long journey. There's so much cool stuff to talk about. First, tell me, um, this rocket, this Atlas V is gonna roll into this section right here. Tell me a little bit about how that works, how that rocket comes in here and, and launches from right here. So our rocket on top of the 1.3 million pound mobile launch platform will come out two days prior to launch will set down. It'll have the mobile environmentally controlled system trailers with it. It'll have our payloads van, our ground support van all attached. And then we do we start our final processing out at the pad to get ready for launch. And this this is the pad right here. So what are we looking at? So you can see right here is our flame bucket cover. That's over the exhaust duct. So for launch, when you see the big plume coming out, it'll be going right down through right there. there. Yeah, it, so that cover is one of the last things we do before we clear the pad. It'll be to pull that cover out and then to clear for launch. So you'll see our exhaust duct right there. So at launch are just over 2.4 million pounds of thrust that we have with the Atlas V booster along with the four solid rocket boosters will propel us right into space. And so what's that like for you? Uh, what do you anticipate is gonna be like when, when it rolls out here and the, and the rocket is getting ready to go? Oh, it's amazing. I mean, every every mission is special. I mean, you look at, there's really two kinds of missions. We have our ones for the United Launch Alliance does that supports the military, um, all of the men and women overseas, just incredible missions that we see. And those, you don't really see the end result, but you know that it's amazing things that we've been doing. Um, and then you have the science missions, which are another variety, which the Mars 2020 mission, Perseverance, will be. And those are in a different variety, just as, I mean, just as special because you get to see 
all the outcome over the next few years, the science that comes back over the years to come. It's just incredible to be able to follow along with the mission just with the general public. And then you can see up above we have our crew access tower. Oh yeah. Um, so that'll be fully stowed and out of the way for the launch, but it is one of our new features that we have out here in the last couple of years at the 41 pad. And just, just so everybody knows, there's some construction equipment around right here. There's a reason for that. You guys are getting ready to get this pad ready for the next generation of rocket? That's correct. So with our Delta IV and Atlas V vehicles um, going away over the next several years, we're making way for the Vulcan Centaur. Um, it's on track. It'll be ready in 2021. So all the construction that you see behind are actually the pad modifications to get ready for Vulcan Centaur and we actually have the Vulcan mobile launch platform just down the road also under construction. Very cool. Now let's take a look at some of the other areas around the pad. Look at this incredible view. We are 200 feet up in the air right next to the launch pad overlooking the coast. Isaac, this view is amazing. Really hard to be. We're standing on top of the crew access tower, which will be used to support the CST-100 Starliner missions. And just down off to our right is where the vehicle will be standing just prior to launch. The mission of Mars starts right here and goes right by this top. That's true. And right behind us, you can see our vertical integration facility, where our vehicle is sitting right now. We have the Atlas V booster with the Centaur on top. Um, in a few days from now, we'll have the spacecraft mated, encapsulated in its 68-foot fairings. And then all together, it'll be 197 feet tall before it comes moving over to the pad. And ready to go to Mars. Now, I'm looking over to your VIF, and is, am I seeing the top of the booster through that, that opening there? Correct. You're seeing the top of the Centaur through those two steel doors that are open. So kind of describe the stack. We can't see through this, but how, how is it lined up right now? So on top of our 1.3 million pound mobile launch platform that we talked about earlier, we have the Atlas V booster. After the booster goes up, we have four solid rocker, four solid rocket boosters that'll be hung individually, and then the Centaur gets stacked on top. That's so neat to see that. Uh, thank goodness they have those doors open. Is there a reason for that? The doors are open right now to support some of our prep operations that we're doing prior to spacecraft mate. Um, the rest of the doors are closed because we like to keep them open for weather and for a lot of the summer storms that we get coming through here. Isaac, now we're a lot closer to the vertical integration facility, and this is literally the track where the rocket rolls out to the pad. Tell me how that works. So on roll day, you'll have all of the doors you see behind you will be fully opened up, all of the platforms cleared out of the way, and then we have two undercarriages that come under the mobile launch platform. They have electrically driven jacking system and rocking system, and they'll elevate the entire structure three inches into the air, and then move that MLP along with the vehicle all the way up to the pad. Such incredible care and such fine instruments balancing this very, very expensive Mars rover to the pad. Yes, it's a very slow process. It takes about 50 minutes to go from the VIF all the way up to the pad. Um, like you said, taking care to make sure that we don't have any effects on the umbilicals or the vehicle as we're making the way all the way up to the pad. Isaac, what tremendous access we had today to see all these neat locations around your path. Yeah, on top of the crew access tower and inside of our facilities, it's very unique access, but it's one that we're excited to share with you and with the world for this amazing mission, and ULA is just excited to be part of Mars 2020 and Perseverance rover. Well, thank you very much for doing that. Isaac Spence, lead structures engineer for United Launch Alliance. So all that payload, the flight hardware, the ground systems, it takes one heck of a team to put all of that together and to help NASA do some amazing things like launching Perseverance over to Mars. With us today is one, one of the icons who, who are behind a lot of that work. With us today is Mr. Tory Brown, president of ULA. Tory, how's it going today? He's going great. It is such an honor to have you here with us. And we would love to hear, us and the audience, would love to hear about what your role is with the uh, Perseverance mission. Yeah, sure. So basically, I am Perseverance's Uber driver. <laughs> so I provide the Atlas V rocket, the mighty Atlas that will carry Perseverance out to Mars. The, how amazing is that? Now,
now, um, are, are you concerned with, um, I, I mean, you've been launching for quite some time, mm -hmm. so uh, are there any concerns with this particular payload sending it up to Mars? Well, every payload is special, and everything on a rocket has to go right. I mean, it is an incredibly complex, incredibly powerful machine, so we're always tense, and I'll share with you a little secret. I've done about 400 personal launches over my career. I get butterflies every single time. Wow. But in terms of this mission, no, we are very confident that uh, the rocket is in good shape, the spacecraft is in good shape. We've got our second largest atlas out on the pad, the 541 configuration. We call this one the Dominator because it has four solid rocket motors that supplement the already impressive thrust out of the center core. So we start with 860,000 pounds of thrust. We're going to add to that 350,000 more pounds of thrust wow. per SRM. When you hear ignition tomorrow morning, do not blink because you'll miss it. Wow. With that tiny little spacecraft, it will leap off the pad. Wow. Uh, I can't wait to see that. That is going to be amazing. And uh, so far, um, everything is looking good for launch in terms of the weather. Um, all yeah. systems are, are go. Everyone, the whole team is ready to go with everything. Yeah, we're in great shape. So we rolled out to the pad this morning on our giant mobile launch platform that was in the video. And we're hard down on the pad now. All the systems have checked out, so everybody's healthy. We'll continue keeping Perseverance cool and dry and clean through the night. And the, uh, the countdown is going to start in just a few hours. Wow. I hope you guys are excited as I am. Um, it's going to be such an amazing thing to see. So I don't want to take anything away from our viewers. So, Maddie, how about we um, kick it into some of the uh, questions we have? Perfect. So first question is, can you tell us a little bit more about the Atlas V rocket and how many times? has it flown? Yes, Atlas has flown over 80 times in various configurations. And like we talked about a minute ago, this is the 541. It also has the five meter payload fairing. And one of the questions I get asked all the time is, you have this tiny little spacecraft relative to the size of that rocket. Why are you in your big payload fairing instead of your smaller one? This is a special configuration, partly because Perseverance is relatively modest in size metric ton class spacecraft. And so with all of that thrust coming off the pad, there's a tremendous amount of acceleration. And our upper stage, the amazing Centaur, is one of the highest, really the highest performance upper stages in the world. And part of what gives it that distinction is as very thin balloon tanks to hold the propellants, thinner than a dime, unable to hold even their own shape unless they're pressurized. And when we leap off the pad with all of that thrust, the acceleration will be so intense it would literally collapse the centaur. And so that larger payload fairing has a structure within side that will take out that load. Because Centaur can't handle the load, the payload fairing does. So that's the configuration of the rocket. One other special thing about it is that payload fairing was fitted with special very large doors so that the MMRTG nuclear battery for Perseverance could be installed actually in our vertical integration facility on top of the rocket. Wow. And so is, is the reason we're you Part of the reason we're using the larger rocket is because it has to travel so far. Do we yes. need um, the extra boost to take it out into f further into out into space to get it to Mars? Or yeah, absolutely. Any planetary mission takes a great deal of energy, and in this particular case, we're going to accelerate Perseverance to over 26,000 miles per hour, so that we're at a very high C3, what we call a characteristic energy, which tells us whether or not we're going to go and escape the gravitational influence of a given body, in this case, Earth. So we will launch this on a hyperbolic uh, escape trajectory that will take Perseverance seven months to cross that distance. And we can only do this, as I think you guys know, once every 26 months, just when Earth is overtaking and about to pass Mars in its orbit. And so we shoot it out there on this long, sweeping, elliptical home and transfer out literally aimed millions of 
miles in front of Mars so that by the time Mars gets there, it actually captures the spacecraft and brings it in. And so that takes a tremendous amount of energy, but also a tremendous amount of precision because we're going to let go of that spacecraft right here next to Earth, just hundreds, just you know, around a thousand miles above the surface of Earth, and that sweeping arc is closer to 200 million miles of distance wow. to be traveled, and it has very little, Perseverance has very little ability to adjust its trajectory, so we have to aim it precisely after all of that acceleration and just gently let it go in the right direction. Amazing, amazing. What else we got from our viewers? So a lot of the viewers um, had signed up to send their name to Mars aboard yeah. the Mars rover, and they want to know, is Tori Bruno's name also going to Mars? <laughs> Absolutely. I was one of the early people to sign up. How exciting. I, I mean, not only would I say, if my name was Tori Bruno, I would send my name and a picture of my stash. <laughs> I'm just saying, if it were me, okay? What else we got from our viewers? Um, so we have a question. Um, are there any uh, major upgrades um, going on at the launch pad right now? Yeah, there's actually a ton of upgrades going on because we are developing a new rocket called the Vulcan, which is much, much larger than our Atlas rocket. Oh, wow. And in fact, more powerful than our three-core Delta IV Heavy. And that rocket will share the pad with Atlas until Atlas flies out. So if you went to the pad today, you would see brand new liquid oxygen tanks because Vulcan Centaur 5 upper stage is so much larger, we didn't have enough LOX capacity. And instead of burning kerosene like Atlas, Vulcan burns methane. So we added an entire methane farm. And then maybe the last big thing you would see right at the pad is a upgraded almost twice as large acoustic water suppression system and when your viewers watch the launch tomorrow morning on the live stream and we say ignition they will see all this water spraying on the pad it's not for fire suppression at all it is literally there to absorb acoustic energy with the core in those large SRMs if we let that sound reflect off the pad back onto the vehicle it would actually destroy perseverance even underneath the fairing and the water dampens that out Vulcan needed so much more because it's a much larger rocket. So we have just finished upgrading all of that as well. So are there, is there testing that goes along with ensuring the safety of the payload and et cetera as you're talking about? Oh yes, yeah, yeah, you know, so much testing. So most of what we have been doing for the last couple of weeks down here is actually testing. So we bring the rocket down in pieces from our Decatur factory. It doesn't look it when you're out there on the pad because there's nothing around it. But that Atlas with Perseverance on top stands 20 stories high. And so you can't move that in one piece. Instead, we break it down into the stages. We bring it here on the rocket ship, which is our special ship that sails through the rivers, down from Decatur, Alabama, through the Caribbean, around beneath Florida, and up here to the Cape. And then we have to assemble it here on site. And then finally, integrate it with the spacecraft. So all of those interfaces, all of those electronic systems, everything on the rocket and the spacecraft have to be tested again after it's been assembled and tested and tested some more and then maybe even a little bit more because you really get one shot at this. You know, only every two years can we go to Mars and if anything goes wrong, you know, this multi-billion dollar spacecraft, this one-of-a-kind unique opportunity for which a lot of researchers have put their entire life's work into would be lost. And so we don't like to take any chances. Even after we rolled to the pad, we test it again. So technically, you're a one-way Uber then. We are one-way Uber. Okay. Yes, just, yeah. just wanted to make yeah, try, like, clarify that. It's like going to the airport. You ah, know. I see. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's a drop off, and then you're done, right? Yeah. All right. What else we have from our viewers, Maddie? Uh, so this will be our last question from Social. Um, is it even possible for you to sleep the night before launch, or are you too excited? I get pretty excited. You know, it. it, uh, it you know, no launch ever gets old. There's there's so much that has to go right. Nothing can go wrong. 
you know, what you're doing is an absolutely amazing feat. You know, this rocket will weigh almost 2 million pounds sitting on the launch pad. It's a 20-story building that we're throwing into space to carry this precious cargo all of these millions of miles. It's astonishing that we can do this as human beings at all. And all these years later, I still get that same feeling. So, no, I won't get a lot of rest tonight. Yeah, you know, and you, you talk about um, things being astonishing and, and the work that goes into all of this. You know, honestly, Tori, um, you know, on behalf of us, you know, we really want to thank your team for all the work that you guys do because if, if you didn't put in the work, um, the expertise, even the, the, the long hours and the sleepless nights, you know, to make this happen, we would not be doing what we're doing now. And, and that's partly a definition of perseverance, right, is if we want it to happen, if we want to make it happen, then you know we're 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 going to persevere. We're going to figure it out, and we're going to find a way to to bring all of this together. So thank you for being part of this mission and uh, and helping us. So you, you you know we're gonna we're gonna have a great show tomorrow. And I I, I know as myself you know as many of the viewers we're going to be very excited to see this thing um, you know actually take off. And and your team has has a lot to do with that. So again, thank you for everything that you've done. Thank so, you. So um, with that, folks, um, that is that is our show for today. You know, um, Tori, thank you again. Um, Maddie, of course, always a pleasure. I hope you, you guys um, enjoyed the show and learned a lot about what g goes on behind the scenes really to um, launch something as special and unique as, uh, as what we're doing here and hope you guys, you guys get to enjoy the launch tomorrow. Thanks for tuning in. Once again, I'm Yves Lamoth with EGS Comp Systems Project Manager, and we'll see you tomorrow at launch time. Have a good one, guys.